Are, what are you watching? Oh, what hey, I'm doing, I'm playing June's Journey. I hear, I, just, I, I just hear finished, music. I know, they're playing up through the speaker, but I just, uh, I just finished some upgrades to my house. And now I got to find all this stuff, like the clock. Is that, there's a clock. And I've got to find the whiskey glasses right there. And the cat right there. And then the table lamp right there. And a the tray. Oh, my God. Oh, look, there's, there's, there she is. Oh, wait, I see her right there. Oh, yeah. So this game, this game is pretty addicting. I mean, it's fun. And it sucks you in. Does it, sound, does it sound like you're um, like in a movie? Yeah. And playing? Kind of. And it's level, I'm going to solve this mystery. It might take a while, but I'm going to solve it. Well, you're... Hey guys, we wanted to show off our brand new shirts and sweatshirts with our awesome new logo. Throw in the back, baby. Oh, here's the back of mine. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Oh. Everybody who's ordered these absolutely loves them, how soft and comfy they are. So you can show your support for the Daily Smash and the Rick and Kelly Show. The hats are just 25 bucks. The sweatshirts are 50 But you can get a bundle of both for just $65. So all you got to do is go to the Rick and Kelly Show, rickkellyshow.com and order yours today. <laughs> I got tipsy off this. You did? Our Roble we, Red? We really didn't eat today. Very little. Welcome to the Daily Smash for Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. Um, I think we're both sunburned. I put sunblock on and I bought some. I did it. Why don't you? I don't know. I didn't think about it. I just went out there and started working in the yard. It's and automatic. Yeah. My doctor's well, like, you have to go get checked. We have to go to the dermatologist. Okay. Well, um, we will do that and let you know what happens. <laughs> We're at Pickleball Party Town taking care of last minute stuff before our November tenant arrives. You worked, our, you worked your butt off. Yeah. I'm, I just feel like I was just running errands. Back and forth. Well, you were very helpful in going to get the stuff that I needed to finish, uh, including... Well, should we Getting wait on bar, that? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's wait on that. Because you have some really cool news about an interview we're doing Wednesday afternoon. Okay, can I just tell everybody really quick how yeah. obsessed I am with my friend Ursula? Yes. So, my friend Ursula, I met her when I first moved here from San Francisco. She came up in her Ferrari. She had a baby. Um, and I... In the Ferrari? It, it, no, she well, she had a, a convertible Porsche. She had a sub Ferrari, oh. but she had a oh no, it was a convertible Porsche, and she had yeah. a little baby in the back. And it was jolt, not a baby, like five, four or five. When I moved to San Francisco to here, five years old, kindergarten. Yeah. And um, we both live in Corona Del Mar, and I see her, and she's exactly she looks like Jolie, and they're the same age. Uh huh. And she's like, oh, I'm you know I live on this beautiful area in Corona Del Mar. And she's like, I'm a creative director. I mean, she would dress to the nines. Yeah. Like, to the nines. Like, somebody that you would see in Sex and the City. It, she's like that. Like, yeah. she's exactly like that. Find out, come to find out that her husband owns Gary's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Which like... Which is the best. They have the best men's clothes in Fashion Island in Newport Beach. Like, it's a big, big customer, store. All, all, Kobe Bryant was... Always there, all the time. Really, like they would take stuff and send it to Kobe Bryant's house. I mean, they have really cool, like high end shirts and suits and like fun, good clothes that you want to wear out. It like high, high, high end and and people like it's athletes, business people, uh -huh. Kim Co guys, like unbelievable. So I want to stop by there actually tomorrow and see if they have a tie to match your dress. I have always been obsessed with Ursula. Always. And and I see her Instagram and she if you guys follow her, this girl is unbelievable. So my girlfriend a Megan who cuts our hair, she came out with this product and I saw it in uh Fred Siegel when Fred Siegel was around. And it was at Barney's and everything. She came up with this product line. But for whatever it just didn't happen. So I see her in her Instagram, and I see her wearing these shoes. And I'm like, oh, my God, I love these shoes. Then I go to Barney's New York in New York City, and because they had Barney's in New York in L.A., and that's why I say New York City, because they have Barney's in L.A., they had it in Scottsdale, whatever. So I go to Barney's, and I see these shoes. And I'm like, these shoes are awesome. They didn't have my size. And I'm like... I forgot who made them 
because they're rare. You can't just get these anywhere. And I'm like, when I came back to New York, I went into Barney's. Was it this guy, George Esquivel? Yes. I see my girlfriend, Ursula, wearing these shoes, and I see Gwen Stefani wearing his shoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, who? I got to know who this guy is, and I need to know where to buy these yeah. shoes. I'm obsessed. Okay. Well, come to find out, he's got a really good story. A backstory? A backstory. Uh -huh. This guy was homeless. He is unbelievable, and I get to interview him tomorrow. Ursa's <laughs> today, connecting today, me. Today, Wednesday, today, Wednesday yes. afternoon. I get to interview this guy. I want to hear everything he has to say about how he rose from wherever he was to create his own shoe line. That and major pop stars and movie stars wear. I mean, and I looked at his website. He's got some really cool stuff. So yeah. I'm excited about that, too. Yeah. And he has men's shoes and women's shoes. And we're gonna we're gonna show you guys a clip on the Smash, and we're gonna put the full interview on the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon.com. Yay! This week, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then you were saying how Ursula was more an example of a real housewife of Orange County than some of the others. Well, okay, so I got written up on the blogs. I wrote something mean about Tamara. Because Tamara went on her two teas in a pod, and this was, I read this on Reality Blurb, so, I mean, I, I don't listen to those twats. To her so podcast. I don't listen to her yeah. podcast. It's, it's, like, stupid. So, I I was like, all right, um, I was reading this article on Reality Blurb, and Tamara's calling out people because they're not showing their lives. Um, the Orange County Housewives. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is a lie and kind of a pump and dive, kind of like smoke and mirrors <laughs> uh -huh. with Tamara, right? Yeah. She doesn't tell you exactly who her real owner business partner is in her CBD line. She doesn't show her kids. Uh, she doesn't have like any of her but, children on there. I mean, but she accuses other people of not contributing enough because they're not doing it either. Correct. But she's not doing it. She's not doing it yeah. at all. Like, yeah. and I mean, what does Eddie have to say? Like, Eddie is like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you so, posted and got a lot of, um, so I posted. actually, you got positive responses to that, didn't you? I like did. People, I, well, yeah, because I think people agree with me. So, yeah. you know, you know, what just really irks me is that these casting directors of, of Orange County, Orange County is like New York City in it that there is a lot of companies that are from here okay that you probably have heard of Z Supply, PJ Salvage, Billabong, Ruka, uh, uh, Beach Bunny, uh, um, the, all the all, any kind of uh, um, VIX like any kind of bathing suit company mm -hmm. uh, Beach Riot they're all from Orange County okay yeah. Orange County is a huge place for apparel especially surf brands beach brands and pajamas like pj uh -huh. salvage there's so much to learn from other people than tamra sitting there and fighting right like there's so many women out there you're that i'm friends with that are so much more interesting but yet they put this liar potster idiot yeah on this on well, listen, you know I, listen, I, I, the ratings I, I, suck I, I, and it, it reflects it i believe in the ratings that they you know and i'm i, I saw that and don't come back here and say stop talking about um orange county housewives i'm not going to well, i was on that show for five years i'm personally friends with tamra i'm allowed to have my opinions on a show that i worked with and know personally these people okay, okay well now we're going to start talking about beverly hills because the premiere is tonight and we're going to start recapping that uh, the whole season and we're going to recap it because people want to hear what we have to say about yeah, this here on youtube and we find we, we think you're going to find our recaps very entertaining so we hope that you will not just watch the daily smash but you also watch our recaps here on our youtube channel um, i wanted to read some of these you got a lot of messages about heather mcdonald pay very yeah. close attention beware of heather mcdonald Heather McDonald is a social climber. She's only out to get ahead. Look at her actions. Beware of Heather McDonald. Your mom was right about her. It's one after another after another in so our comments. I gave uh, Heather McDonald a little phone call today. Yeah. And, well, first of all, we're going to be in a beautiful, 
a gazillionaire wedding. Oh in yeah, uh, Las this weekend Vegas in at Vegas. Wynn. We're going to the Wynn in Vegas for a and we're flying JSX mega million dollar wedding. Yeah, we're flying uh, semi private. <laughs> I it's just like called soul today. Train, soul plane. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that. Uh, I'm excited. We're going to stay at the Wynn, and it's going to be um, a very um, expensive affair. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's going to be exciting. And Heather's going to be there. So Heather's going to be there. And Megan Weaver's going to be so, there. So I still talk to Heather McDonald, okay? I know you guys think I'm not friends with her, but I am. Uh, even though she has her friends, like uh, Shin had... Uh, what, or somebody had Tamara had Shannon coming after me and uh -huh. anyway so uh, you called Heather because you well, got all these that got warnings. sidetracked because I'm looking at his friend right now with this weird face so this well, is I'm why I got sidetracked I see this yeah. big head of Rick and I caught <laughs> me off guard that's the next guard. story sorry <laughs> but you were talking about Heather and about how you reached out so I reached out to Heather and I said hey Heather I'm like what is this all this I sent a screenshot she goes I get the same thing it's from the trolls they're just starting to try, try start they're trying trouble. to start yeah there's a bunch of trouble. trolls yeah okay well then so there, there's no problem no I'm looking forward to hanging out with them it's been a while uh, I, I, I want to see I still see. have her picture up here yeah her Christmas photo that uh -huh. she took here the, the, she took at our house mm -hmm. it's a cool picture I like it. It's up there. The photo you were just looking at yeah, was... Yeah, I mean, if, if you guys were sitting here with your husband, and all of a sudden you see this... We, I forgot to mention this last week. My buddy, Anthony Reese, threw um, our 45th high school reunion in Silver Spring, out, just outside Silver Spring, Maryland, a couple weekends ago. And we were traveling. We couldn't go. And so he sent me this photo of him holding... The picture that we, we, someone made those for I my, made them. Thank you. For my birth, my 60th birthday party yeah. in South Beach. And Anthony came, him and his wife Karen. And I've known this, this guy since I was, I don't know, 12 or 13 years old. And he saved that, <laughs> that big headed picture of me <laughs> and brought it to the reunion. So I was there in spirit. And uh, here's a picture of some of my classmates. Aww. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. And, you know, I I was class president, senior class president. The guy I beat out. Lane. You were? Yeah. The guy I beat out for senior class president, Bruce Lane, he's right there. That's him. Oh. He was sophomore and junior class president. I'm sure God, he thought. God, these guys look so old compared to you. Bam. I mean, not that you look, you have gray hair, but. But I did uh, want to mention Ilya Wine. We are enjoying the Roble Red right here and now. I'm telling you, this might be my favorite bottle of red wine I've ever had. Oh, mine too, hands down. I love this wine. Me too. It is so good. And I just want to thank you again for all the hard work you've done here at the house. What? But um, Ilya Wine <clears throat> sponsors the Daily Smash. We appreciate their sponsorship very much. And we want you guys to try it. It is a fantastic wine. You can have it delivered right to your front door. Just go to Ilya.com and use the discount code Rick and Kelly 20 for 20% off. The prices are already great. You know you want some wine in the house. You should have some for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. You get your Roble Red. Get your Moscatel Macabeo. Sign up for their newsletter. And I know that Layla Joy Williams told us she's going to give away two free year-long subscriptions. Uh, but in the meantime, you should order some for yourself because you will not be disappointed. In fact, you're going to love it. Cheers, baby. Clinky, clinky, drinky, drinky. Mm. So there's that. Um, the home improvement projects. There, we because we had to put a split on the wall because the AC unit on the roof, you know, that big tank of a unit wasn't cooling the whole house. It's an old house. We don't have the this the right kind of duct work. 1950. 1950. So we added a split to this party room behind us. And it's it's cool. It's like you know the, the half of it's they're on the ugly, wall. They're ugly. They're ugly, but they're they're they efficient. work so well. Yeah. And the other half's outside, but because uh, they they had to vent it basically through the wall with a tube, a pipe running down to drain it off when the, the you know the water or whatever. The condensation. And Kelly could not stand looking at those pipes. It PVC. looks like so ghetto. I mean, listen, this this house was built in 1950s. It's it's mid-century modern. It, uh -huh. There's parts of it where it's like it's ghetto. Okay, it's, but, it's but it we is. have done so much to to. But it's to a palm desert. Bring it up to date. Mid-century modern. You guys know. Yeah. 
and I'm not trying to pretend something that it isn't. You guys saw what it was like when I bought it. It was a crack house. Yeah. And so these, so we, so I she didn't want to buy that. it. By the way, I talked her into it because I could see the potential here. I knew what we could I do with this place. I live behind a guard gate where I didn't have to worry about anything. No, you know, no maintenance. But you love it here, right? Oh, I do. But it's a lot of work. That, it that's is. why I see why people that are elderly go into condo communities because who wants to do yard work? I do. I don't. I love doing I, yard work. I, I, like, I grew up like, doing I'm, yard work. I like it. I transplanted when, when some, it's just two of us. Some plants. When it's just two people. Uh huh. It's nice to not have any maintenance. Okay. In any event, Kelly had this great idea to take these square panels. They're like 15-inch metal panels of, of uh, like. But I was block, gonna like do them like this. I was gonna go like this, 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 and make like a triangle. Uh huh. Like the like this. I'm gonna show you. I, I took a picture of it. But. But because we wanted to cover the pipes out there, we came up with a different pattern, just basically to, to go over the pipes with these things. I think it turned out great. It's hard yeah. to find screens. Yeah, that, especially it would have to be like, like a mid -century, custom. Like mid-century modern, yeah. So we did that. I mounted the Sonos play bar in our bedroom under the TV, and I had to do that twice, three times, because I put it too low. Oh. And he was like, no, that's too low. I was like, oh, okay. So I put up a little higher, like, how's that? Said, nope. I'm like, okay. And I put it up again, and now we're good. Yeah. And then uh, we put on, uh, we did all those ground, those solar ground lights yesterday, all around the sidewalk. And well, then we put I try in, to do it. I, I just, I, I'm such an idiot when it comes to, like. For me, it's like second nature. I can pull weeds. I, I know exactly how I to do this. I grew up doing that. That was my punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 with Kelly's help, like placement and stuff, we put in another couple dozen ground lights, and then I put in a couple dozen of these up lights on the bushes and the trees. And it's crazy how quickly you can find, I mean, 24 lights, and we I need probably more. another dozen at least in the front yard, and we could put 30 of them in the back. I think lighting is just so, so important. It really is. Um, that, this this house looks so different when we bought it. Oh my God, worlds apart. Oh. Because like just the turf alone dressed up that front yard so nicely. The you know the, it that used to just be, be like a, right a, a um, pile of rocks and that guy next door to the right, Sean, he's nice. You like him? He's a nice guy. A guy across the street's nice. Uh huh. She's nice. Everyone's nice. Yeah. But these that lady's but cool. Kimberly and Jeff, they're the only ones that are mean. <laughs> Well, just, you know, ignore well, anyways, them. Just ignore them. I know, like like the mean people out there. We're going to go, because it is when, it's Tuesday evening here as we record this show. And I ha we have to go home early. Like, I have to wake up early. We have a long day the tomorrow. stuff, because I have my cleaning lady coming Thursday. Yeah. And then we have the new tenants coming in. Yeah. We're not going to be here for six months. We're going to be here for, for a, a half a year. A day a or a night every month for the next three to months. To work. Well, I guess this is our job. I mean, we did buy this house as an income property. Yeah, and we're but crushing it. But once you it. come here, though, you don't want to leave. No, it's true. And and after Jolie goes off to college, this is our home. We're going to stay here and in the at the beach. We'll split our time. What about the casita? We're building a casita. That we'll will be our... that thing as, a, as a, like a hotel. That would be fun. And we're going to crush it. Yeah. Um, speaking of going to dinner, I just picked this uh, in the news. In the news. That tipping is out of control in New York City. Is it? Oh, because, you know why? Why? Let me guess. I didn't read the article, but I lived in San Francisco. I know why. Why? Because they have the tip within the tax, and then they have a stupid tax for, like, a person that works there, and then they have an insurance tax. Well, I don't know about all that. Uh -huh. All I know is that I guarantee you. So when, when you go out to eat, you have to pay all these stupid taxes... Well, I'm pretty sure in New York you and just then, pay the state then, tax on the on the bill. No, and then I know, you but it's like your, little hidden taxes. So if you just if you go by the number of what it is before tax, you do twenty percent. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. For but the tip. For yeah. The tip, but people just don't do that. I don't. I just look at the total bill and then I put twenty percent. I usually do that too. Then in San Francisco, you have to pay a, uh, a, a, a for the waiters and waitresses to have insurance. It's uh -huh. like an insurance tax for them to have 
Yeah. Health insurance. Well, that's not what this story is about. Okay, but okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought I was. I, was I, I like to guess. So okay. actually, here's the check, and there's a subtotal the sales tax. Yes. But then they add in now in New York City, uh, most restaurants apparently are adding in an 18% gratuity. Wow. Like they do in Miami. Yeah. They were already doing it in Miami all the time, everywhere for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now Olive Garden is doing it. Olive Garden. I went, when I used to work when I was like in my 20s, yeah. I was at Olive Garden for all you can eat. Uh, remember those salads and the uh, breadsticks? Yeah. They were delicious. <laughs> you would do that all the time? At work, yeah. We would go there for work. This uh, this article says that New York City diners... But this have, was in the 90s. Yeah. Like early, like, 90, like 95, 96. Well, in the, in the uh, mid to late 80s, when I got my first reporting job in Columbia, South Carolina, making $12,500 in salary a year, <laughs> my buddy Brett and I would go to happy hour where they had free food. Like, oh, we used to do that at the and, Arizona Republic. And dollar beers. Yeah, we used and we to would do that buy too. one beer and eat whatever they had. It might just be nachos, but whatever it was, we'd have a dollar beer and we'd eat as much food as we could yeah. to fill up on their free food. We used and that to go, was, that we was used to, go to Morton's buy a 15, 15, and this is in the 90s, $15, oh, this is 2001. Yeah, fifteen dollar thing, and then we would get these sliders at Morton's. They would have them, like for free. Yeah. With like free sliders at Morton's. Yeah. Oh but you had, God. but it was expensive for the, but but if you did the math. Yeah. It was cheap. I can't believe you would ever have to pay a drink in your for a drink in your life. Oh God, yes. Every How guy in America wants to buy you a drink. I am. Guys in Arizona were slim pickings, dude. Like I had to import them in. Oh. Just like I have to do in California. You've been in Arizona too. New York City diners have long been accustomed to having a mandatory gratuity added onto bills for large parties of six or eight, but increasingly it's becoming common to see an 18 to 20% tip tacked on for parties of just one, two, three, or four people. So that's what basically what the article is, is like all these restaurants now are adding mandatory gratuities. And I just wanted to ask you, do you think that's okay? Um... It's easier for me, but I don't feel like there's a hustle. Again, here we are in a world where everything's the same. Everything is like it's going down socialism, and 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 there's no reason to work harder. So if you already know you're going to get a tip, no matter what, no matter what, what's my incentive to hustle? Yeah. I mean, what's my incentive? Right. I mean, tips is to ensure prompt service. That's what that is, mm -hmm. and you know you get paid a, a tip to ensure. You're supposed to work service. hard for the money, right? But there you go again. Everybody wants to be the same. Everybody want you know no, no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you educate yourself, you get taxed to death. You get squished in the middle, and then uh -huh. both, you can't move up in life. I just have one other observation about this. How bad must it have been at Olive Garden, where? servers were not getting tipped that they had to institute a mandatory 18% on every check like they must have been getting stiff left and right Who's by like, cheapos who were going to Olive Garden I mean, and not there's no tips anywhere else in the world so I think we're in agreement that you should have to earn your tip yeah you shouldn't have it automatically you should have to earn it yeah just like you should earn having to live in your place you have to earn you know your stuff you have to work and earn it in order to receive it. What does tip stand for again? To ensure prompt service. Right. So if you're good at your job, you get rewarded for it. Right. But if you suck, if you're sitting in the back on your that, phone. That's not how everybody, everybody doesn't want that now. You know, you usually you're like, okay, let's be in a group. We're going to be in a commune, right? We're going to do this as a community. We're doing this as a group. Yeah. That's communism, community. Being one, doing a group thing, right? Now, socialism, same kind of thing, uh -huh. but, but it's a little bit more lax. Here in America, you're supposed to, if you work hard, you get rewarded. That's how it was supposed to be. But now, people want to dumb it down. They don't want to work as hard. No. They want, people, they, they everyone want, we know who has me, a business. Give it to me. I want to work for free. Me, 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 me. Everyone we know. Hence, hence. Hence the uh, 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 forgiveness. 
I had to work my ass off in college. What is it? My friend Kelly Schultz, who set her ass smoking weed, she gets to, like, like now she gets her, everything. She, she lived a live easy street in college. I worked my butt off, and now she gets, no, I, I didn't have loans. She had, now she had to get some forgiven. It's that kind of behavior, that kind of thought process that drives me nuts. Everyone I know who has a business who's looking for employees says they can't find anyone to work. They don't want to work. Nobody wants to work. No. I have to add two more things before we go. Okay, go ahead. One is subscribe here on YouTube, please, if you haven't yet. Uh, we appreciate you guys very much, and we just want you to know uh, every time we post. So if you subscribe and hit notification, the notification bell, you'll know. And the other thing is we did a Zoom call on Monday for our new... Um, partnership that we're doing with Switchway USA and we had I don't know 60 people on there whatever there's only room for so many we're gonna do another one on Monday that first one was mostly for our patrons on patreon but this next one on Monday afternoon 5 p.m. Pacific 8 p.m. Eastern is for our smashers I'll tell you more about it tomorrow but just know like mark on your calendar if you can be available for a zoom call next Monday it's a chance for you to potentially make thousands of dollars in side income every month and uh, and make a difference in our world, and more on that to come. You want to share your favorite? Oh no, thing? no, we got to go because we have our dinner reservations right yeah, now. Yeah, but like just so you know, this is one of Kelly's favorite. Yeah, things. it only lasts two years. Just so <laughs> FYI, just it's expensive, but it makes everyone goes because oh, I love the Dream Hotel. It I love the so addition. Good. It smells like the you can get the wind smell. Yeah, if you guys like those hotel smells? But we paid for I that. Mean, I paid for this. We're not if getting they, paid for this. They, they only last two years. They only last for so long. You have to put alcohol in. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but it does make your house smell good. Okay, cool. Okay. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.